Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What's your favorite book you've read and why? The Count of Monte Cristo. A fantastic tale of revenge and if it's worth it. I completely agree, this book is always a top recommend. The story of ultimate revenge is beautiful and sad. It will leave you just as broken as the characters in the book, and I love it for for it. What is revenge, if not the equal act? A chance to smooth again a crooked line. A deal you make with you yourself, a pact. And what's the right for such a wrong as mine? A secret knife begets another knife. A shrouded sin begins another sin. A stalled or stolen life deserves a life. Defeated, cheated kin and act akin. And though you call revenge the poisoned cup. The dark for which you open up the door. I'd lift the chalice near my lips to sup. And drown the world for all it did before. I dug two graves too vast and great to flee. And one's for you. The other one's for me. The Red Wall series by Brian Jacks. I love the adventure and questing and figuring out riddles. The way he described the feasts God I always wished I could experience a feast like that. The way he would write the different dialects for the different animals was so much fun. They are young adult books, but I'm nearing four decades and still love them. Been reading them since I was just a wee lad. Eulalia. For Red Wall. Edit, well. I just woke up to see that this has blown up and I am just overwhelmed. Thank you all for the love and awards. So many replies. I was trying to respond to some, but I'm just too overwhelmed, a blubbering, weeping mess. Tears of love and joy, I assure you. Just know that I am at least reading every last reply and weeping with joy at how much love there is for Mr. Jax and his works. The Hobbit. I remember my dad reading it to me when I was really little before they got divorced so when I read it on my own I remembered some parts from then. Plus, it's a great story that I loved. I read it in middle school. I then reread it as an adult in anticipation of the movies, and I was riveted at points and couldn't put it down. I couldn't remember what happened and was completely on the edge of my seat. Then the movies came out and they were bad. I would really recommend looking up one of the many fan edits of the Hobbit movies. They cut out all the bullshit and left just the stuff that is in the books, and it is much, much better. Shame on them for trying to stretch it out and make more money. The Name of the Wind I was jobless for a while, super depressed, and close to homeless. That book played a huge part in getting me through all of that. I still reread it from time to time. Still waiting for his third book. Who isn't? Kitchen Confidential. It's just so honest. The way he reflects about his career while dropping in little bits of knowledge of how the culinary world works. I still need to read this. His death is the only celebrity death that actually made me emotional. I have not read any of his books, but his show was the only show that my wife and I religiously watched together. We love to travel and have several times gone to places on his recommendation. I feel like I will get emotional reading the book. I thought of buying an audiobook of his, as I drive a lot for work so at any given time I am usually reading a heavy content book while listening to a novel or easy listening business book, but I think I would get upset listening to him talk. Same here dude. He was an institution and a hero to many of us restaurant folk. I actually welled up when I found out it was a suicide, that was heartbreaking. You may enjoy listening to the audiobook version of Kitchen Confidential. He narrates it himself and it made me feel closer to him after he was gone. East of Eden. I learn it a lot about people and why they are motivated to do the crazy things they do. I also learn it that there are people who are just straight up rotten can't be fixed. I think it's chapter 3 where he describes Kate as a monster, comparing that some people are missing an arm or a leg. Kate is missing something in her mind which makes her evil. When my mother and wife were decorating my daughter's nursery, they insisted we put a quote over her crib which I felt was cheesy forward slash played out. I gave in, on the condition I got to pick the quote. Such a beautiful quote, it's painfully tragic knowing what it's about. Hyperion by Dan Simmons Fabulous SCI-Fi imagination, filled with characters, worlds, technology, politics, and innocence which invoke the most vivid movie reel of a story in my mind each time I read it and the others in the trilogy. Update, Quartz. Blew up more than I expected, thanks for the gold kind stranger. Edited a word. I love it.
the poet's story made me happier than it had any real right to, especially because he was my least favorite of the pilgrims. Silenus is a shithead pp asshole, but he sure can tell a story. Overall, this is probably the best sci-fi work I have ever read. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Just a nice satirical book that takes the piss at every turn and looks into the mind and motivations. Where else can we learn the secret to flying, is to throw yourself at the ground and miss. I knew I would find that book in this thread. I really did not enjoy it, and I even read the next two books because I thought maybe there was something wrong with me. My point is, as with any of the books on this list, if you do not enjoy a book that the rest of the world loves, that is okay. That is why there are millions upon millions of books to read. It's a book of concepts and ideas, wrapped around a loose framework that might only barely be mistaken as a plot and the characters are often stretched thin or ignored completely in pursuit of a philosophical idea, witty wordplay or joke. There's hardly any dramatic tension or stakes as the whole of humanity and the world is destroyed by the third chapter. In fact all the stakes built up for the main character in the opening scene are shown to have no meaning less than 30 pages later. There's no point to almost anything the characters intentionally do. It's irreverent, meandering and formless. I love it so much. The ships hung in the sky in much the same way that bricks don't. The story so far, in the being, the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Jurassic Park is the only novel I've sat down with and consumed within 24 hours. I love the movie but the book is so much more detailed, and the characters so much deeper, and in some cases totally different. I grew up on the movies and got the books as a birthday gift when I was 23. Imagine my shock when I learned that, in the books, John Hammond was a massive asshole. I loved it. I never read the book although I plan to. In the movie though it can be argued that he is an asshole simply due to his complete incompetence and doing the exact opposite of sparing no expense. The entire catastrophe of Jurassic Park was squarely his fault. The Phantom Tollbooth It was fun to read as a kid and then I picked it up again as I got older and noticed so many little details that kept it fun and interesting. Flowers for Algero That book was a roller coaster of emotions at the end. I used the comma wrong. As a guy who copywrote for a living for about five years in my twenties, that line was breathtaking. Slowly the grammatical improvement and decline was breathtaking. By his high put the book is writing Faulkner level needlessly complex sentence structure, and it's highlighting his hubris that his thoughts themselves are artificially over-exaggerated. To see the decline afterwards and him refusing to try something to retain his intellect even a small portion out of pride was heartbreaking. The end left me devastated. Where the red fern grows, rips your heart into pieces. We read this in elementary school. They told us not to read ahead, but I did, and boy am I glad I did because it saved me the embarrassment of crying in class. I cried in class and my teacher pulled me aside later to make sure I was okay. I'm not sure I ever scared my mom faster than when I burst into loud wails from the back seat of the car at 8 years old. She demanded to know what was wrong, and all I could say was Mama, Old Dan and Little Anne. She murmured, I know, honey in sympathy, and we were united for a moment in the shared sadness. I read that book in fourth grade and was so inconsolable that my mom pre-vetted my books for a while to make sure I wouldn't be emotionally traumatized. I was a sensitive child. Animal Farm 1. It was a satire. 2. I knew what it was mocking. 3. It was actually a good story. We read this in high school. The student teacher didn't know it was an allegory for the Russian Revolution and taught the book like it was just standard fiction. What? We also discussed the book in school but how did the teacher not realize it was an allegory? If you search for the book online, it is the first thing you find. Ender's Game I was 16 and a typical jock. Not a reader at all. My chemistry teacher told me to read it. Blew my mind. Yeah I know Card is an extremely questionable human being. My 16 why our old self is changed by what the guy is now. The sequel, Speaker for the Dead, is amazing as well. Haven't read the third one yet, maybe I'll wait another 10 years to pick that up. I actually prefer Speaker for the Dead, I think Card does as well. The main reason he re-released Ender's Game, it was originally a novella, was a deal he made with the publisher to get SFTD published. Anyway, the following novels Zeocide and Children of the Mind get a little weird, especially Cotty M. But I'll die on the hill that Speaker for the Dead is his best work.
It's crazy to hear Card's personal beliefs because a lot of his writings, especially in Speaker, is people coming to terms with their feelings and how that drives us as individuals. Just doesn't line up with the crazy Mormon beliefs he holds in real life. Very odd. Card's books helped me come out of the closet. End a taking about in the moment of knowing someone, he loves them. It made me realize that I want allowing anyone to love me by holding myself. I wanted to write a letter thanking him for helping me come out and accept myself. Then I read his political views and wanted to send a letter even more.